Hello, it is time for another round of science vocabulary. This week we are going to be discussing evolution in taxonomy. Uh, to start with, I want to show you a little video of what evolution is not. Um, evolution is not going to be a magical transformation of an organism of a species into something different than what they started as. An organism is going to begin and end its life with the same set of traits in general. And um, so when we're talking about evolution and taxonomy, what we're really talking about is changes in a species or population of organisms over a long period of time. Um, we're talking hundreds or thousands of generations of time. So make sure that you have these words in your vocabulary spreadsheet. You've written down if you've seen them before or not. And if um, required, you have also written down what you think these words mean. Start with our first set of vocabulary here. Um, first of all, what evolution isn't um, and what evolution is actually is just going to be um, looking at how species change through time. So here we're looking at the last 65 million years of time and um, species branching off and um, forming into new species, new groups of species, perhaps, um, through a period of time. This history of speciation, of forming these new species, um, having differences in traits, that's going to be the basis of the theory of evolution. Um, theory of evolution, we're going to have new species forming as a result of changes in the environment or expanding your ecosystem or any number of other things um, they are going to make it so that that species is more successful than another part of its species, and then it becomes isolated, and then it forms into a new uh, standalone species. Uh, you have these common ancestors. A lot of times these common ancestors are going to be more of an idea than something that you can actually put your finger on. Um, if you do happen to find an actual common ancestor between two different species, then that would be called a transitional organism. Um, you can have some things like a lungfish is a fish that has blood vessels on the inside of its swim bladder. And so it can sort of breathe air, uh, kind of like an amphibian. So you have this proto amphibian thing. Um, that would be a transitional species, common ancestor between fish and amphibians uh, that exists. Uh, when you're looking at common ancestors, you're going to be looking at uh, body structures, and then that's going to show you uh, homologous structures. Uh, these on the left-hand side of the diagram are all homologous structures. They're going to point toward having a common ancestor. They all, all of these organisms, the human, bat, porpoise, frog, and horse, all have the same set of bones, but those bones are doing different things in those uh, five different organisms. Now on the right hand side of the screen over here, we have another four organisms. These four do not share a common ancestor, but they do have common body structures. Uh, this is called an analogous structure. An analogous structure is going to be a similar structure based on uh, an organism sharing a similar space in an ecosystem uh, rather than having an actual common ancestor. These these four different organisms do not share a common anatomy. They just share a common place in the ecosystem. So analogous structures are going to be filling a similar place in an ecosystem. Homologous structures, you're going to have that similar anatomy. And um, that similar anatomy is going to point to a common ancestor. So the anatomical similarities, those are going to go with homologous structures. Anatomical similarities are going to be a common ancestor idea. Embryological similarities really fall in line with the anatomical and homologous structures. Uh, this is a chick embryo right here. And on the right hand side is a human embryo. These two things are obviously very different organisms, but early on in development, they're going to look really similar. Uh, these pharyngeal pouches are what form into gill slits and fish. Um, that structure has never gone away from embryo development through time. There's no disadvantage in it because that organism isn't finished 
forming. Uh, the same thing with this post anal tail that's sort of like a dog tail or a cat tail. It just means that you have this bone structure that goes past that animal's butt. Um, obviously, we don't have a post anal tail. Uh, chickens don't have much more than a nub back there either. Uh, those things go away during fetal development, um, either inside of a uterus or inside of an egg. Um, as that organism develops into a fully formed organism of its kind, then that goes away. But those similarities point toward a very, very distant uh, common ancestor. When you're looking at these anatomical similarities, uh, talking about sharing common ancestors, this is described um, as a classification system called taxonomy. So taxonomy is going to be how you organize living things um, from very general categories like kingdom through to more specific and more and more specific categories, all the way down to a species level. Uh, and that's going to be based on those anatomical similarities, uh, genetic similarities now that it's 2018. Um, and so those, those carry through, it's just an organization system. Uh, we are, and many other organisms that we study are all vertebrates. What that means is that we have a spinal column. That spinal column contains our spinal cord. Um, and so that makes us vertebrates. Uh, that's going to be also called chordata. And that's the phylum that we are. We are animals. We are chordates. We are mammals. Um, and then from here, then we'd split away from panthers, obviously. Um, down our own road of uh, primates, hominids, then homo, and then sapien. So we are homo sapiens in the family hominid, order primate, class mammal, phylum chordata, and then kingdom animalia. Uh, last, well, second to last, chronological just means that you're putting things in order from oldest to youngest, um, just like relative age dating. Uh, putting things in chronological order. Lastly, our lithospheric plates. Lithospheric plates fit in with this unit because when we're talking about fossil evidence for plate tectonics, we're talking about fossil evidence for evolution. We're looking at things like um, having fossils of the same species on the South American and African plates. The only way that this happens is if these plates uh, move away from each other, which means that these pieces of Earth's crust are separate from each other. Uh, those separate pieces of crust are called lithospheric plates. And so that's going to have to do with the rigid, rigid upper plate and then going through the upper mantle, um, the lithosphere and upper part of the asthenosphere um, before you get down to the actual mantle proper. And so all of that upper material that's part of the lithospheric plate uh, that's either part of a continent or part of the rock that is underneath an ocean. Um, those are our words for the week. And um, I hope that you have a good week in science.